recently, I've been thinking a lot about how far Valorant's come in the last two years. The 2022 Champions Tour is now behind us, Brazil's claimed their first world title on the largest stage we've seen to date, and the era of franchising is just around the corner. Not only that, but the competitive landscape has seen so many gameplay innovations and shifts in the meta. Look no further than the evolution of agent pick rates in professional tournaments. The release of Fade, the resurgence of Raze, the rise of... <coughs> K.O. Ever since his release, K.O. has been quietly creeping up the agent leaderboard, recently becoming the go-to initiator for pros on several maps. But I don't think most people realize just how broken he's become on a map like Ascent. Not only did K.O. achieve a 100% pick rate on Ascent during all of Masters Copenhagen, he was only missing from a single team's lineup at Champions, and the score really speaks for itself. Suffice to say, at the highest level of play, K.O. has become a must-pick on the floating map. So why an online comp is he only the 11th most popular agent on Ascent, with the second lowest win rate? At first glance, he's arguably the most intuitive agent to control. Just chuck all of his abilities. Well, whether it's his knife, molly, or flash, he's also the only agent that can benefit from using more precise lineups for all three, which can make him intimidating to learn and challenging to master. So today, I thought I'd demystify some of his most useful or downright cryptic lineups seen in pro play on Ascent, and try and make him a little more accessible for your own comp games. I really hope you enjoy. Zero point knife lineups are the bread and butter of any skilled KO player, and to be honest, you can get a lot of good value from simply throwing it against the nearest wall to see who's behind it. Even still, I found that in many cases, especially before rounds when you have ample time to set up, you can easily elevate your gameplay by using more calculated knives that are harder to predict and virtually impossible to contest. Take A sight on attack. One of the most common knives you'll see is immediately against this front wall of A main but just watch how easy it is for a proactive defender to shoot, especially if main is blocked by a one-way smoke. Instead, here's a lineup that nearly every pro team has picked up, which clears all of the close angles on site and lands too high to counter. Its six second delay also gives you time to rotate through spawn or mid if you want a fake presence A main. And if a defender attempts to hold wine, it gives them just enough time to commit before cutting off any exit strategy. Nice zero point from King, stops Durka from playing in wine. Look at this, Babyface actually got into wine, but he has no escape mechanism here. If they throw any sort of KO nade or anything like that, and all of a sudden he's stuck there. To perform it, stand against this wall in top mid, align your knife icon with the top of this edge on the wall, and throw. If you prefer to use your knife for deeper on site, another great option is to toss it against the front of Dice, which can't be shot from behind Jenny or Heaven. But rather than risking getting shot with a jump peek or wasting time pinging Dice through a smoke, here is a pre-jacked version that Fnatic employed against Leviathan at Masters. To do it yourself, begin against the front of the tall box in A main. Overlap the tip of this spike and the right edge of this line, and throw. Just like the first lineup, this one lands 6 seconds later, which should sync up perfectly with when you're repositioned to take sight. If it's mid you want to suppress, here's another delayed, unshootable knife that lands on the roof of Market, which both Optic and DRX used in the lower finals match of champs. For this one, again start by this corner in top mid, and aim a bit to the right of the lamp, with the center of this line resting on this corner of the wall. As for a variation that begins on B-side, here's a lineup that seemingly every pro KO uses. It'll expose Market and trap any defender in pizza. The high flash to allow the steps forward, Aspas has got picked as well. Speaking of information, Yumpy's just been spotted. To replicate it, stand against the right edge of the barrier in B lobby, align the top of the rightmost shingle with the top left of the knife icon, and throw. Staying in B lobby, I see a lot of KOs throw this knife to clear the close angles in B main, but just like with its A counterpart, it's pretty easy to shut down. Instead, one stupidly simple lineup that produces the same effect is to just toss it through this fence, which spots B main, logs, and even a good portion of market. And for a knife that's hard to spot but reveals farther on to B-Site, teams like Fnatic, Loud, and FPX have all implemented this clever lineup that lands on the roof of Shed. Zero point actually cancels out the updraft and the blade storm for Sire player. To recreate it, first stand against the center of this door, then aim in this window, a little above that window, and throw. Transitioning to defense, discussing KO's best zero-point lineups gets a little trickier. Unlike attack, where teams generally prefer reserving the knife for the site they're hitting, on CT, the robot's greatest asset is his versatility, with the potential to suppress enemies pushing either site by launching it across the map. With this in mind, I'll be structuring this section by knife landing location, beginning with A main. 
But what does the best knife for A main even look like? Well, if you're only ever flinging it against the front of sight, sure it might get the job done, but you're really only using about 19% of the zero point's total area of effect. The rest of this circle is wasted on sections of the map that are either out of bounds or you already have control of at the start of the round. Okay, how about the corner of Cubby? 23%, but we can still do better. Latching it onto one of the farther walls of Mainer Lobby would cover more ground, but we're looking for something unshootable. Well, as it turns out, this balcony overlooking A Lobby is the perfect spot. Not only is any knife untouchable here, but it spans the entirety of Main, reaching all the way to the far box in Lobby. And over the past year, pros have devised four distinct lineups to get it there. First up, if you're playing on A site, here's a heaven lineup that Jonah P employed during NA's LCQ. To reproduce it, back into this corner, overlap the tip of this line in the edge of the roof, and throw. If you'd prefer to guard A-Site from Tree, here's another version NRG used in the same tournament. This time, hop onto the barrel and garden and aim a tiny bit below the end of the roof. If you're posted on B-Site, check out this cross-country knife Nevera threw in Paper Rex's elimination map of champions. What a knife. From the opposite side of the map. Lines all the way towards A-Main. I believe it tagged Jing. Must have tagged Jing, yeah. yeah. To copy it, back up to the top of the stairs, orient the tip of this line onto the top left corner of the electrical box, and throw. And lastly, if you find yourself all the way in Boathouse while A is being pushed, you can mimic the same Hail Mary throw Guild utilized against Paper X in Copenhagen. Just step over this trash pile and position the top spike of the flash icon over the bottom right corner of this electrical box. Now, let's talk about b site Firstly, if you're defending it yourself, there's honestly no better knife than your most basic throw into cubby. At the start of a round, there's no chance the attackers can reach it, and while a defender's holding the entrance, it's tough to even get an angle to shoot it. Not to mention, it already covers 100% of main, and then some. But to generate a similar effect, if you're all the way on A site, I'll point you towards three options pros used in 2022, starting with this one from Tree. Fnatic has long favored this lineup to suppress attackers pressuring B, but if you're observant, you're probably noticing these knives are a little off the mark. By the time Mystic's teammates have called for help, attackers are already long past that portion of main, even when they're still stuck behind a sage wall. So here's my take on the knife, altered slightly to be a tad more effective. Beginning in the same spot, look up until the left corner of your alt icon touches the top right corner of this lantern, and throw. Next up, if you're defending A short from Garden, it's probably faster and safer to copy this lineup from 100 Thieves, where Asuna backs into this corner and aligns the edge of the UI line with the top right corner of this window. Suppressing. The result is a knife that suppresses main, but also reaches deeper onto site than the last. And finally, if you're playing on A site, there's this Rafters lineup DRX used against Optic and FPX at Champions, and it has some interesting quirks. To pull it off, RB exploits this tiny opening and garden, which is smaller than the size of a Killjoy alarm bot. And with such a small window comes some very specific positioning. To execute it, place the tip of the UI line along the top of this plank in between these two darker stripes, but closer to the one on the right. Suppressive. If you don't veer to the right, the knife might look like it worked but it'll get snagged on this metal bit and not reach nearly low enough inside of main. Additionally, because of the odd trajectory of KO's throws, his knife will only clear such a tiny gap if you toss it after KO reaches the apex of his jump. But as long as you click while KO is falling down, it's actually pretty easy to do. Trust me, your teammates will thank you later. Flash drive lineups are certainly the most niche piece of KO tech. Typically, your basic underhand toss around a corner through a smoke is just more practical, as long as you throw it. Or rather, that's what I would have said before the 5.07 update, which turned the entire flash meta on its head with tweaks for several agents. Post-patch, KO's overhand variation now lasts an entire second longer than its alternative, and it ties Sky's Guiding Light for the longest flash in the game. Now more than ever, learning consistent overhand flash lineups will give you a notable leg up over the competition. But first, let's cover a few basics. There are two main overhand flash techniques pros use. Wall bounces if you're flashing for yourself, and pop flashes if you're flashing for your teammates. 
Wall bounces are pretty self-explanatory and can be done just about anywhere. There are only two real lineups that require practice. The first is this setup to take tree from catwalk, where you aim along this line and need a running start to give it enough distance. And the second is a well-placed flash to clear out B main, where if you start the round against the left side of its entrance and aim where the top of this sign meets the lantern, it'll blind any defender holding it. But outside of that, wall bounces admittedly haven't seen much play, primarily because champions concluded a full month before this update dropped. But now, with a whole second to gain, I predict these types of loose wall bounces will somewhat replace the underhand toss in pro ascent matches. Traditional pop flashes on the other hand, that we've seen plenty of on ascent. While these typically take the form of repeatable lineups, if you're inclined to eyeball it, here's some info you can use to produce your own pop flash. KO zero point flashes exactly 1.65 seconds after being thrown, which without running or jumping, comes out to about 27 meters away if you're blinding at eye level. So, pinging a nearby wall and estimating the amount of drop will work in a pinch. But with that, here are some of the pros use. For A main on attack, I'd recommend this simple lineup showcased at champions by players like Victor, Death, and Laz. And as Zipan demonstrates here, you can easily pair it with the lobbed knife we covered earlier. Here it is in action. There's a three play stack allowed as well. The flash is perfect, and they're gonna take the space quickly. And who's on the other side? The close down, Depth's gonna be he's, charging on him. He's as well! Blind. He still he gets the kill! Right towards Zadak! And the site is open! All you have to do is stand against the back corner of lobby and aim near this edge of the roof. As for actually taking sight, teams usually opt for sending a pop flash over the front wall. And out of all the options I tested, my favorite was this setup from DRX. He is now unoccupied. The flash, sir, he's flashed up. He can't see anything buzz on the dash right into his smoke. And that KO pop flash on A is and disgusting. Then, within the first 20 seconds, yeah, it is. A minute 20 Either despair. over the wall or in yeah. the way. And, and there's like no avoiding it. It's like you have to tuck Jenny, but like. For RB's version, stand by the front of this wall and touch the edge of the UI line to the bottom of this light on the end. As expected, it blinds essentially all of sight. Another lineup I've stolen from DRX is this pop flash to take B sight, which requires you to squeeze into the back corner of main, aim a bit above the rightmost full window pane, and throw. Switching sides, these windows are also used as the entryway for a common pop flash on defense. This can be a handy tool to delay attackers, or potentially give your teammates the opening for an aggressive play. To do it yourself, start against the left side of this door frame, aim at the roof of this building, and then a tiny bit down into the right. Speaking of aggressive plays, this tiles crunch has recently risen to the top of many teams' playbooks. Leviathans used it on Xset and Fnatic with the Odin. Jeez, catch it on to four of them! Leviathan going for that tile scrunch. Paper X has used it on Fnatic one, two, three times in a single match. Jinx, same play out of the flash, and he's in. I have absolutely no idea that this pace is oh a possibility! And DRX demolished Furia with it at Champions. Is he gonna dash forward? No. He is! He's going up and in! The flash is there! And he's got you two! Maniac. Buzz is still going! Another dash online to work with! He has the escape to play with! And he doesn't oh. even need it! Four for Buzz! Another phenomenal DRX round! This defense is unstoppable! To set up for the same aggro play, start out by this panel and aim a bit to the right of this island. Flashbang! And lastly, for a site, there really isn't a lineup needed. To produce a pop flash here, just apply the 27 meter rule we covered earlier, which seemed to work out pretty well for Sentinels in this play. Oh boy, in a very far position. Good oh, flash! God. That is unbelievable. KO's Fragment Grenade is a bit of a mixed bag. It can be a useful tool to keep opponents at bay, and I think it's a fitting addition to balance out the rest of the robot's strong kit. But part of that balancing means it's one of the weakest mollies in the game. It's less destructive than a raised nade, it covers less ground than a brim molly, its duration is shorter than a snake bite, and it has fewer round uses than a nano swarm. Here's all the data. But suffice it to say, our boy isn't exactly topping the charts. 
especially considering KJ and Viper can technically double their damage, duration, and reach if they use two in one round. Also, because of the fragment's nature as a one-time use deterrent, it's most effective when tossed reactively to delay resistance at choke points, which doesn't really lend itself to lineups outside of pre-planned sight execs. That is to say, they're hardly ever used on defense. Though, I'll give an honorable mention to this creative option from Jonah P, where he waits on the top of the stairs and aims where this tarp meets the rafters. And I could see it being especially useful if an opposing KO tries to take sight with his ult. As for attack though, we'll begin as usual with a site, or I'd say there are three major spots you might want to target with a fragment grenade. The door to tree, rafters, and dice. Probably the most popular of these is the door to tree, with the simplest version I saw coming from Paper X. Device stands by the edge of this wall, aims at the second highest notch along the bricks, jumps, and throws. Then, you have this dice lineup from Cloud9, where Zeppa steps into the back left corner of A main and aims at the tip of this spike. And to generate the same effect as this heaven grenade from Loud at Champions, first stand by the front edge of this wall, overlap the left side of the ult disc in this corner of the lamppost, jump, and throw. It's also worth noting that from the same spot, you can easily combine this with the DRX flash we reviewed earlier to take sight. Now, compare that to a B site exec, where I'd say again there are three main zones pros throw the explosive. Stairs, CT, and the door to market. Starting with stairs, you can copy this variant from Paper X by standing against the same wall as our shed knife. First, squeeze into this corner, point your crosshair about where these two planes would intersect, jump, and throw. Alternatively, from the same spot, you can perform Guild's lineup for CT. Just look a bit to the right of this corner, jump, and throw. And finally for Market, here's another lineup from Paper X, where you walk against the left wall of B main until these two bars frame a border around the giraffe poster. Then, aim at the top of the window frame, get a small running start, and throw. Now, I think it's time I level with you guys. As I mentioned earlier, because you only get one fragment per round and it's pretty short, staring at the sky for a post-plant lineup probably isn't the best use for it. In fact, across the several dozen Ascent matches I researched for this video, I only witnessed KO lob a nade to stall the plant or defuse in a single round. However, in the name of making this a comprehensive guide, I will very briefly cover a couple options for each site, if that's your thing. I definitely have my own ways of having fun in Valorant that aren't exactly meta either. To stop the plant on A, stand in the back corner of rafters, overlap the top of this window frame and the right edge of this line, and throw. And for post plant, here are two throws that land at default, either from the corner of wine aiming at the bottom of this pink splotch, or against the front wheel of this bike, looking at the tip of this antenna. To stall the plant on B, simply get a running start from CT and loosely throw it between these two vents. And finally, if you're holding this corner in main, walk left until you can see this square, look at this line, get a decent running start, and throw. It should look something like this. Okay, now there is actually one final type of fragment lineup I'd like to cover, and it's the use case I was initially most excited to show off destroying KJ lockdowns. However, in the process of making this video, Riot released update 5.12, which besides the bogus sage nerfs, increased the health of KJ's ult from 150 to 200, meaning now KO's fragment will only destroy it if it lands within two meters. Two lineups that do achieve this are this attack-sided setup on A, where Sadik backs against this wall and places the corner of this line onto this white notch along the generator, and this defense-sided throw for B main, where you simply bank it off the front slab of bricks in this window. But aside from that, many of the other common lockdown spots I intended to include are now either impossible to contest or highly inconsistent. And I think that's a shame. One of my favorite parts of Valorant is how all of the abilities interact, and the deep metagame that develops to counter certain playstyles or balance the capabilities within a team comp. I think it's cool watching a Seas trap opponents in an orbital strike. I like how Sage's wall can give Raze just enough of a boost to peek over these buildings after blast packing up. And sure, maybe using 200 credits to click through a wall should encounter a 7-point ultimate. 
but I think the knowledge and timing necessary to successfully pull it off with a fragment was already rare enough, even at a pro level, to make it plenty fair and rewarding. But what do you think? Were the changes to non-player damage a smart idea in the long run? What balancing changes would you like to see in 2023? If you made it this far in the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And please let me know which agent and map combo you'd like to see explored next. I'm hoping to release several more of these comprehensive lineup guides in 2023, but they tend to take a good bit of time, so in the meantime, I'll be experimenting with uploading a few more frequent, shorter Valorant-related videos, something in the ballpark of topical video essays or game physics deep dives, so look out for those. But with that, I'm Foxy Moxie, and this has been Pro Level Lineups.